Hi, my name is Shivata Samadoleke. I am an alumni of the University of Limpopo and currently a student at the University of KwaZulu Natal. I'm going to give an online talk on paleo climate and hopefully you'll find it easy to understand and you'll enjoy it as well. On the hierarchy of models, we are at number four, which is made up of drifting continents, climate changes, ice ages, and evolution. In the beginning, we learned about the Big Bang Theory and how everything in the Milky Way galaxy came into existence. We then learned about the Earth's temperatures, where we learned that the Earth's temperatures are not too hot, nor too cold, but just right for life to exist in it. We learned that actually the Earth's distance from the Sun is not the reason why the Earth is habitable. We also learned about circulating climate and circulating oceans, and most recently, we learned about modeling. We learned that a model is representative of a certain phenomena and that there are different types of models. Most importantly, we learned that all models are wrong, but some models are useful. Being the curious cat that I am, I went fishing and I came across this past climate graph. I was able to analyze this graph to some extent. I was able to see that on the y-axis is temperature represented in degrees Celsius, whereby at the bottom is 0 degrees Celsius, suggesting that it's cold and it gets warmer as you go up. While on the x-axis is time represented in millions of years, whereby on the far left is 60 million years ago, and on the far right is zero representing the current time. I was also able to see that on the first part of the graph, that is, from 3 million years to 60 million years ago, the Earth's temperatures were warmer. While on the second part of the graph, that is, from 3 million years to the current time, the Earth's temperatures have dropped and there is a fluctuation occurring. In the beginning, I did say that my name is Shivoteso, and those who know Tsonga know that it means question. And yes, you've guessed it right. After analyzing this past climate graph, I came up with some questions. Firstly, how did the scientists that came up with that graph know what the past climate was like? I mean, 60 million years ago? We all know that time-traveling machines have not yet been created for us to travel back in time and investigate what the past climate was like. So how did they know what the past climate was like? Secondly, how did they know the exact dates of those climatic conditions? Thirdly, why is there a fluctuation occurring in the last 3 million years? Fourthly, why did the Earth's temperature drop 3 million years ago? In order to answer those questions, we are going to look at climate proxies, dating methods, the Milankovitch cycles, and why South Africa is special in terms of paleoclimate. Before we can unfold what paleoclimate is, we first need to understand the difference between weather and climate because we often confuse the two. A friend of mine once told me that weather is what you're going to wear today and climate is what you're going to pack for a vacation. Confused? Well, it's simple. Weather is the atmospheric conditions over a short period of time, that is from a day or weeks or maybe months, while climate is the atmospheric conditions over a long period of time, that is from 30 years going back. Paleoclimate is the climatic conditions in the geologic past reconstructed from direct and indirect data source. One would ask, what is the significance of studying paleoclimate? Well, we study paleoclimate because the Earth is constantly changing to develop models and to predict the future. A wise man by the name of James Hudson once said, the present is the key to the past. What that means is that we need what we have today in order to investigate what the past was like so that we may be able to predict what the future will be like. Now, can we really know what the past climate was like? Think about it. We only have about 170 years of instrumental data, which is direct. So what was the climate like thousands or maybe millions of years ago? In order to find that out, we use climate proxies. 
Climate proxies are any feature or set of data that has a predictable relationship to climatic factors and can be used to indirectly measure those factors. There are different types of climate proxies. For example, there are tree rings, ice cores, coral reefs, fossil pollen, deep sea sediments, and plenty more. In this talk, we are only going to discuss the first three that are highlighted in red. Tree rings. The study of tree rings is known as dendrochronology. What is done in this study is that a tree is cut horizontally in order to expose the rings. The size of the rings is what is being studied. The thicker rings, which are the lighter ones, would suggest that it was a rainy season and therefore optimal conditions for the tree to grow. While the thinner rings, which are the darker ones, would suggest that it was a dry season and therefore the conditions were not so favorable for the tree to grow. The dark patch over here would suggest that there was a forest fire during that time. What we need to remember is that the tree rings are directly affected by the seasons. Ice cores. Ice cores are extracted by vertically drilling a hole through the ice. The seasonal differences in the snow properties create layers just like in the tree rings. The thickness is used to derive precipitation rate while the melt layers are related to the summer temperatures. Past temperatures are directly related to the concentration of carbon dioxide, methane and other greenhouse gases within the ice uh, cores. This means that the ice cores are not proxies themselves, but the substances found within the ice cores are the actual proxies that are being studied. Coral reefs. Coral reefs are the remains of marine life. They are made through the secretion of calcium carbonate, which mainly comes from the seashells. As we know that water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen, this results in the oxygen isotopes being needed for the formation of the coral reefs. The type of oxygen isotopes found within the coral reefs will help determine what type of temperature or what temperatures were like in that area during the formation of the coral reef. What we need to remember is that all the three proxies that were discussed leave out a layer after a season or a year. We now know that the scientists that came up with this past climate graph were able to find out what the past climate was like because they used the climate proxies. What we still want to know is how they found out the exact date of those climatic conditions. We are now going to look at the dating methods. Unfortunately, in this talk, we are not going to discuss the romantic dating methods that will help us find a potential husband or a wife, but instead, we are going to look at the paleontology dating methods. There are two types of paleontology dating methods, namely relative dating and absolute dating. Relative dating is the science of determining the relative order of past events. What happens in this dating method is that a substance will be compared to another substance in order to find out or to estimate its age, and the law of superposition is used. Absolute dating is a dating method whereby the exact age of a substance is determined. In absolute dating, there is radiometric dating. Radiometric dating is the method of dating a geological specimen by determining the relationship proportion of a particular radioactive isotope within the specimen. In radio radiometric dating, there is radiocarbon dating and potassium argon dating. In this talk, we are going to discuss radiocarbon dating. Radiocarbon dating is done through measuring the decay of an atom that was once alive to determine when it was last alive. What happens is that the cosmic rays from the sun generate thermal neutrons. The thermal neutrons knock off some 
protons from the nitrogen-14 atoms to create the carbon-14 atoms. The carbon-14 atoms is then consumed by different vegetation. The carbon-14 atoms have what is known as a half-life. In this half-life, what happens is that the original amount of the carbon-14 atoms will become half after a certain number of years, specifically after 5,730 years. In the first example, what happens is that the carbon-14 atoms is absorbed by vegetation, which is a tree. The tree then dies, and after some time, after the tree has died, the carbon-14 atoms is conserved within the dead bodies of the tree. In the second part of the graph, the carbon-14 atoms is absorbed by vegetation, which is grass. The grass is then consumed by an animal, for example, a horse, and after some time, the horse dies. The carbon-14 atoms is then conserved within the dead bodies of the horse. Now, because we know the relationship between the carbon-14 atoms and the time since the item was cut off from the atmosphere, the carbon-14 atoms act like a clock telling us exactly how long ago the sample was buried. Now, we know that the scientists that came up with this past climate graph were able to find out what the past climate was like because they used the climate proxies. Secondly, we now know that they were able to find the exact date of those climatic conditions because they used the dating methods. What we are yet to know and still want to find out is that why is it on the second part of the graph that is from 3 million years to the current time there is a fluctuation occurring. We are now going to look at the Milankovitch cycles. A wise man by the name Milankovitch came up with a theory that explains to us and tells us that climate change has been occurring naturally without the influence of anthropogenic activities. In the first cycle, which is known as eccentricity, the Earth's orbit around the Sun or rather, the shape in which the Earth orbits around the Sun gradually changes from being a circular shape to a more elliptical shape. Now, what this means is that at some point, the Earth is closer to the Sun, while at some other points, the Earth is much further away from the Sun. This cycle takes about 100,000 years to occur. In the second cycle, known as obliquity, the Earth is tilted at an angle. Now, the extent in which the Earth is tilted changes. The cycle takes about 41,000 years to occur, and the cycle explains the seasons that we have. Now, as the Earth is tilted, the higher atmosphere, the higher, uh, the higher part of the Earth will absorb or receive less solar energy from the Sun, while the lower part will receive more solar energy from the Sun. In the third cycle, known as precision, the Earth wobbles over its top for a course of 23,000 years. Now, this cycle explains or determines the timing of the seasons that we have. What we need to remember is that the three cycles that we discuss all occur at the same time and they are responsible for the fluctuations that are occurring on the graph. This video or uh, in a form of a model will help us observe and have a better view of how the cycles occur. As we can see on the first cycle, which is eccentricity, the Earth's orbit around the Sun is gradually changing from a more circular shape into a more elliptical shape. While on the second cycle, which is obliquity, the Earth is tilted. And on the third cycle, which is precision, the Earth is wobbling over its top. As we can see that all these three cycles are occurring at the same time. 
We now know that the scientists that came up with this past climate graph were able to find out what the past climate was like because they used the climate proxies. Secondly, they were able to find the exact date of those climatic conditions because they used the dating methods. Thirdly, we know that the fluctuation occurring after 3 million years is because of the Milankovitch cycles. What we still don't know is why the Earth's temperatures in the first part of the graph, that is from 3 million years to 60 million years, they are much warmer. We are now going to look at why South Africa is special in terms of paleoclimate. South Africa is special in terms of the paleoclimate because we have what is known as the West Coast Fossil Park. What happened is that some years ago, mining took place in the West Coast Fossil Park and as mining was taking place, the miners came across what is known as the fossil. Now this fossil was dated back to three, five million years ago. If you can look back at the graph, you'll see that 5 million years ago, the Earth's temperatures were still warmer. Now, this means that we have a window into the past at the West Coast Fossil Park. And therefore, people can go there to investigate what the climate was like 5 million years ago before the Earth's temperatures dropped. Secondly, South Africa is special in terms of paleoclimate because of the stromatolites that are found at the Port Elizabeth. Now, these stromatolites were discovered in the early 2000s and they are extraordinary and special because they occur at an interface of freshwater and marine. Now, believe it or not, these stromatolites are believed to have evidence that makes us believe that life might have originated or started here in South Africa because the stromatolites are dated back to 3 billion years ago. Cool, right? Now, we now know that the scientists that came up with this past climate graph were able to find out what the past climate was like because they used the climate proxies. Secondly, we know that they were able to find the exact dates of those climatic conditions because they used the dating methods. Thirdly, we know, that we know that there is a fluctuation occurring in the second part of the graph that is from 3 million years to the current time because of the Milankovitch cycles. What we still don't know is why the Earth's temperatures in the first part of the graph that is from 3 million years to 60 million years ago, they were higher. In order to find that out, you need to stay tuned for the next talk, which is plate tectonics. Now, in summary, we know what the significance of paleoclimate is, and we know what paleoclimate is. We know that it is possible to reconstruct paleoclimate using climate proxies. We know that we can date climate proxies through the dating methods. And we know that climate change has been occurring naturally without the influence of anthropogenic activities as explained by the Milankovitch cycles. And yes, I think after this talk, any one of us can go and tell Donald Trump that actually climate change has been occurring for a minute. I hope you understood and enjoy the talk. Thank you.